Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae and today I'm here to do a book review that I've been wanting to do ever since I finished this book. I have been doing book reviews for this particular series ever since the first book came out in year of 2021 and I'm just really excited to get in to talk about this particular book which is the last book in the series and the Beast of Prey series and the book I'm going to be talking about is Beast of War by Ayanna Gray. <sighs> this book it brought like it came into a full circle of all three of the books you have beasts of uh beasts of prey and beasts of ruin which is the first two books in this series and or trilogy and there's so much that i felt like i've learned and i felt like the characters have learned throughout this entire journey the two main characters that we are focused on throughout this entire series is kofi and ekon and with each one of these books there's always another point of view and I found it very interesting because when I read the first book, we are introduced to the Shatani, which she's known to be as Adia. Uh, Shatani was this monstrous beast that just killed people, killed their, you know, their family members and whatnot. And she was an ancestor once Kofi realized who she was and the powers that she had. And then in the second book, of uh, which is this one right here, Beast of Ruin, Kofi we're introduced to Kofi's grandmother. Um, and I feel like Ekon is also introduced to someone as well, um, which in his past that he didn't realize was still around or existed, right? Um, and so with Kofi's grandmother, we learn more information about how Kofi wasn't or didn't learn or know about who she was and the the magic that she she possessed you know the magic that she had and she had inherited and it came down to it because of a relationship that her grand grandmother and Kofi's mother had which is why Kofi's mother didn't share with her the knowledge of what Kofi of the powers that, and the abilities that she has um, and then we come into the third book where we are introduced to Akande, who is not related to Kofi whatsoever, but is a part of, of Kofi and the, her final journey into um, pretty much stopping Fedu from recreating the world. Now, in this series, we're introduced to all these different gods and goddesses, um, which I can't remember top of my head of all their names. Uh, so for this one, we have At Atuno, Atuno, which is god of skies. We have Amakoya, goddess of seas, uh, Tiembu, god of deserts uh, in the west, and the symbol is a jackal. You have Badwa, goddess of jungles. You have Atashe, goddess of valleys. And then we have Fedu, god of death. And Fedu has been coming for Kofi ever since the very beginning of the series into the first book, which is Beasts of Prey, which I love these covers. They've done just a fantastic job with them. But with this final book, Kofi has learned so much and now she has to hone in to her powers and she's realizing with the splendor that she has, which you will learn learn throughout the series once you pick it up if you haven't done so already is that it's it, she doesn't really have that control over it and when she does have the ability to use it it's pretty much killing her so she's trying to hone in on her magic and then on top of that she's trying to make sure Fedu doesn't recreate the world and you know he brought up the un the untethered which are you know the dead and it's pretty much uh, bringing unbalance to the world and so now with this particular book this last book uh beast of war she is bringing all the gods and goddesses to come together uh, against their brother <laughs> as you know they're all related and they realize that fedu is bringing an unbalance to the world and to the realms that they are in control of um and like I said, this book has, it brought into a full circle of self-discovery, uh, a journey of learning who each, learning who Ekon is and learning who Kofi is and embracing who they are. And like I said, with each book, we, each book in this series, we are dealing with somebody like their ancestors and it talks about identity and, and, and destiny. There's one quote in this book. I don't know necessarily if it's a quote, but I, I enjoy, I liked it. Uh, and Ekon has said this. It says, I believe all our destinies probably are shaped from the moment we're born. And the more we try to control it, the more likely we are to play right into its hands. Um, 
and then it says, but I don't think that means we shouldn't try to take ownership ownership of whatever destiny is in store for us if anything i think that means we should try even harder to do the right thing to work towards the best outcome possible i don't think i have to kill i have to kill the person i love most and that was based also a prophecy that was said that he ha probably will have to, he will end up killing someone that he loves most and with Ekon, I felt like this was a milestone for him because from the first book, he's more of like a, a control freak. He likes to be in control. He likes to have a plan. Whereas opposed to Kofi, she's more spontaneous. She just thinks things off her head and just does it. No plans whatsoever. Um, but she ends up learning things along the way of sometimes there has to be a plan. I mean, and Ekon uh, also, you know, he learns as well. Like sometimes you just have to go at the, at the top of your bone, uh, the bottom, you know, top of your head and just go for what you want to do. You know, you can't wait, you cannot alter. Um, so this book was phenomenal. I gave it a four to five stars. I did feel like the ending ended abruptly, but I liked the conclusion of it all. I liked how Kofi and Ekon and their relationship it was rocky which I felt was really realistic it wasn't like oh I love you oh I love him no it was they didn't really like each other at the beginning but they they started to get to know each other and they started liking each other but that wasn't the main point in this story it was which a lot of times when romances are involved it seemed like that's the prominent storyline but with this particular uh, trilogy this series it's not it's it's not like that at all because it's all about the journey about the journey and the character building that Ayana Gray has done a fantastic job with which I appreciate her writing I appreciate the time that she put in for writing this last book um and just how awesome this is this book is and the location and just seeing black you know black beautiful people on the covers of these books is amazing um I had I even wrote notes down <laughs> because I just love the self-discovery learning and embracing the past and facing what is to come they did not like the past and what they had learned but then they overcame it and they realized the mistakes that their ancestors had ancestors had done in the past that they wanted to do differently they didn't want to repeat this cycle which even in the second book when it comes to Kofi's grandmother um she did not want to repeat that cycle anymore and she realized that she had hurt Kofi because she wasn't she didn't tell Kofi of who she was and the power that she that she possessed you know and it it brings up about family secrets and what it can do to someone if you just keep it in and hold it you know keep it to yourself and not share it with the person that's going through the same thing that you that you have gone through and that you have seen and I get it her mother Kofi's mother didn't want to have anything didn't want Kofi to have anything to do with it but at the end of the day Kofi still needed that information in order to help her you know because if if she has all these powers and she has no one to lean on it or in guidance that can be a lot on one person you know what I mean so I like this self-discovery and a journey of an on a journey of honoring your ancestors and embracing and loving the people that are in your life as well there have been times where they're burdened and they feel like man I wish this person was here with me or that person but then again they realize that they are with them with them always they may not be physically there you know right in front of you but they are still with you and that's what I loved about this book when we come to Akande who is very old and he taught and we're going down memory lane with Akande uh, who is in the another uh a POV so each book has a different like three different P uh, point of views and you know and this one is Akande and it goes into his past and how he lost control of his splendor and an accident happened and it just messed him up completely. Um, it changed him. But then when Kofi comes into the picture, he realizes that he can still play a role. He can still make a difference. And who knows, he might be able to still be around and to save Kofi whenever she needs it, you know? Um, and I feel like with this particular book, I just feel like this is a must read that everyone should read because it's once again it's not about a romance it's about a journey of two people complete opposites and they come together to 
to learn things but also to take down Fedu and what he is trying to do and what he's trying to do to their home and to the people that they love and care about um I just mm. I just loved it. I was, I like, I was reading this book and I think like if I, if I could, like if I didn't have to work or anything, I would have read this book in a day. That's how good this book is. That's how good this series is altogether. It's a fantastic series. Um, I enjoyed every book in this series. I've done a book review for each book for every one of the books now the first book and the second one and now we're to the third book third book beasts of war and i think that you should pick it up i honestly do i'm not just saying it just to say this i don't say this about every book that i read i'm being quite honest with y'all um and then i like the fact of how with econ or just in life in general because it just it it's so like yes it, this is a story it's a fictional story but then it comes with so much so many life lessons that are realistic about like you're not going to always have control of your life control of your destiny sometimes you have to realize things are just out of our control and sometimes we have to go with the flow which is why i that quote that i share with y'all what econ had said he embraced that he's like sometimes things are just out of my hands but things will happen when it you know when things are meant to be, it will happen. And then on top of that, we see a lot of these mythical creatures. Like uh, in this book, we are featured, you know, we see, mer you know, introduced to a mermaid, which is also known in, you know, in the Ruba culture, uh, Mamiwata, you know? So I enjoyed the essence of this book and lionesses. I just loved it. Um, it just, it was such a breath of fresh air. Um, and it just, it just felt good to just see the outcome of, of it all and for the choices that Kofi made at the end um, and realizing that some things, you know, some things don't always have to happen. There, somebody doesn't always have to die. There's other solutions to a problem, you know? And I just had a great time with this book. I had such a great time. Uh, like I said, I love the fact of the ancestors. I love that aspect of it when it comes to ancestors and honoring them. Yet they may not honor them right away. They, you know, because of they felt like they've been burdened. But at the same time, they do appreciate what their ancestors had done for them in the long run. Um, and now they can learn from their ancestors' mistakes and not, um, you know, follow the same cycle and break that cycle. Um, but overall, four to five stars. If it comes to with, with all three books all together, I would give it a five to five stars because this is such a fun, fun time. And I just loved and enjoyed every moment of being with these characters. Um, Ayana Gray, if you're watching this, thank you so much for writing these books. I'm just so grateful that I was able to read these and do book reviews for them because... I feel like the world, I feel like people that are interested to read books of self-discovery and ancestors and learning and just embracing who you are. I just, this series is for you. Um, but I'm not going to say much about it <laughs> anymore. I really feel like y'all, if y'all read, if you read these two, then you got to pick this one up because you got to see the final conclusion of the series. Now, if you haven't picked the series up, please do so. It's, it, the third book is already out. It came out last week. So definitely go ahead. Just pick up all three books if you can, you know, or you know what, go to the library or use Libby. If you're, you know, anything that you're accessible, that's accessible to you. I highly recommend Be Surprise series. 100%. 100%. I loved it. Um, and li literally, this will be a series that I will reread and even read to my, you know, to my kids as they get older. Um, but overall, I love the journey that it took me on. Uh, this, These books will stay with me um, because I feel like each book, they always give you some type of life lesson, lesson of sometimes things are out of your control, things where you can break this cycle, um, things of family secrets and how you can break that cycle too and not have these, these moments of where somebody is realizing there has been a secret that's been withheld from them and they didn't have a choice in the matter you know but overall 
I enjoyed this and I, I definitely will be rereading the series. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button as well. And once again, I hope you all love this review. I hope y'all pick up this book because I do not want you to miss out. But once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all are staying healthy and staying safe and I'll see y'all next time. See ya.